Good afternoon. I just wrapped up a trip to Las Vegas, and that was interesting, to say the very least. Um, wow, yeah, definitely a December, I'll remember. A couple of things um, about Las Vegas is, for a card counter, you really have to be motivated to make it work, and... Um, I definitely had a hard time meeting my hourly requirements for this month. I actually have some catching up to do because I still haven't. Um, you cannot let your seat get too warm in Las Vegas because it's hard to bet anything without drawing unwanted attention and phones ringing and pit bosses standing over the table sweating on you and fucking thumbing through the discard tray. It's yeah, they're quick to spread your flyer. In my opinion, it's more of a novelty experience. It's like, I wouldn't go out of my way to hit Las Vegas, but if you're driving by, cool, definitely worth a stop. The games are worth a lot. There's some really, 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 really good double deck games in Las Vegas, if you know where to look. But, um... Are they really worth that much if you can't really play for more than a half hour, 45 minutes? Um, and you have to drive around, like, from game to game to game, and then you get flyered, and it's just, oh my god. Like I said, it's pretty nice to, it, to be able to say you've done it, but it's uh, definitely one of my most stressful blackjack trips ever. The trip started well enough. I hit an all-time high a few times, and um, places weren't recognizing me. Everything felt good. I played some poker. I enjoyed myself. I stayed at the stratosphere. And then I started to lose quickly, like very quickly. I was just out of nowhere. I just started losing my ass off like unbelievably bad I couldn't believe how fast it was happening I ran out of cash one day and had to go to the bank the next morning I had to stop playing that night because I lost so much I have never taken a, a down swing like that in one day but I have now I have now add that to the resume so yeah I went to the bank the next day picked up some more cash and kept losing yep Kept on losing. It was just the same thing. Not, I wasn't losing as much as fast, but it was pretty much straight down on the graph still. I just was like either pushing or losing hands. There was really no winning going on at all. It's kind of day where like you'll have two 20s or two 21s and the dealer tears off like a seven card 21. Or like you have a blackjack and a 20 and the dealer flips over a blackjack. It's just... Oh man, it's hard to... It's hard to even imagine. It's like the stuff nightmares are made of. And um, I, um, I've i gotten a lot of that money back, but I'm still in the hole a little bit from it. So we're working on that. But yeah. I was playing in this one game, and uh, I bought in in the middle of the deck, playing a double deck game, and started playing two hands and betting big and... Pit boss walks straight over to the phone, and I could hear him. Normally, you can't hear like what they're saying, but I could hear him say, "Yeah, he just bought in for 500 and started playing two hands." Should I get his ID? <laughs> like, oh uh, man, so I know this is not good. And I only had like one hand left in the deck, so right after that, I without coloring up, I just stacked up my chips, put them in my sweatshirt pocket and started walking and um, figured I'll come back later, right? The dealer's like, hey, are you going to call her up? You know, she's Chinese, so she sounds like that, right? And um, I just waved and pretended I didn't hear her like, yeah, thank you, bye. <laughs> so yeah, I got, I got out without getting backed off. And then I came back later and the game was gone. No more double deck table there. They took the table out and replaced it with a Baccarat table. I was like, what the hell? So, you, I, you couldn't write this shit. Uh, I'm, I'm very serious. They don't even have a double deck game there anymore. And uh, so you guys, 
you can blame me for that if you want, but I don't, I don't really know if it was my fault or not. I think they just had enough because that game it has to get smashed like on a regular basis, and um, it seems like the kind of place that'll get really mad if they miss an opportunity to do a back off. So who knows? So I'm at another place, and I know I'm about to get backed off, but I have a lot of shifts, so I'm trying to color up real fast. And, of course, I get backed off at the table while I'm coloring up, but um, it's better that I color it up because trying to cash out that many green chips just wouldn't have... Uh, just would have looked odd if I came back to cash those out. So I get backed off, and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to try to cash out anyways, which was a mistake because I get to the cage... And they're asking me for my ID. Two security guards swoop in and are on both of my shoulders. And I'm like, you know, they're asking for ID. I'm like, I'm not giving it to you. Just cash me out. And they're like, yeah, but you look young. And I'm like, I know I can win this argument legally. But I decided to be a tough guy about it. I was like, you know what? Give me my fucking chips. So they give me the chips back. And, uh, and then the security is walking with me. And I'm like, you know, I'm leaving. I don't know why you guys have to follow me. I really hate when they escort me. It's like, you know, isn't this harassment? Like, leave me the hell alone. I'm just, I'm going to my car. I'm leaving. And I don't know what the big deal is. And they're like, oh, we always do this when we trespass somebody. I'm like, nobody told me I was trespassed. And they're like, yeah, well, we're telling you now. So, and I still have all these chips. Now, I know people that you can cash them out, but I'm not the type to ask. Like, it's not other people's jobs to cash out my chips. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, I called gaming, actually. My friend recommended I call gaming. And, um, so I did. And they they were like, so what name did they trespass you under? Or did do you have, like, a player's card? And I said, no, they never got my name. I never gave them my ID. And he's like, oh, well, then you're technically not trespassed. I was like, really? It's like, yeah. And I was like thinking like I should go back there and play <laughs> that would be funny right I didn't do that but um but I definitely will eventually knowing that and um so I did manage to cash the chips out and I uh, didn't have any problems but yeah good little tip uh from gaming you're not trespass that's again the value of not giving your ID up in the casino so yeah, that's another fine example of why you do not play rated. Ironically, I am actually on my way to a place right now where I am going to be playing rated. But uh, I just almost never do. I can think of three places off the top of my head I've ever played rated at. And two of them were because you had to play rated in order to play blackjack. You had to have a player's card. And they didn't database, so it didn't really matter. And... Um, yeah, so, I don't know, I'm a real strong believer in not playing rated for a million reasons I can think of, I don't know, I just, there's people that still don't agree with me, but I definitely have been around long enough that that's my opinion. The only other thing that I will say that gaming said to me, this might be useful for some people, is, um, is that the casino might want to verify my play, so... They do have the right to verify that the chips you have were obtained legally and that they are yours. So they can, if they're smart enough, they can ask about that and have you tell them when you played and they have to review the surveillance and they are required to keep surveillance for a certain amount of time. And I asked the gaming official, well, how long do they have to keep the footage? And he said, well, I can't really disclose that, but you're getting pretty close to the limit. So get in there and cash out those chips. And I will say that it was about, it was a little shy of 10 days when I had this conversation from the time that I got trespassed. So there you go, there's some useful information. The more you know, the better, right? You never stop learning. And uh, these rules are in Nevada. So it's different everywhere you go. It's another thing that you might want to keep in mind. All right, I'll give you a couple more stories real quick. I was playing at this one place, and the pit boss comes over, walks around the table quickly too. Like, 
I'm like, oh shit. And I'm like, I, I got my chips in my hand. I'm ready to roll out, right? And he rips out the chair that's next to me and puts it in the middle of the floor and then runs over to the phone. I didn't turn around to see, like, to look at the chair or anything. I just was trying to act like I didn't know what was going on. So he gets on the phone and then the person next to me is like, oh, oh somebody threw up. So he put the chair over this pile of vomit that somebody had just made behind me. And that's, it was just to keep people from walking through it. But I, I thought it was like, I thought he was going to use that space where the chair was to stand there and talk to me about my blackjack game. But no, nah, no, nope, just, just a little paranoid. That's all. The next day I'm at the same casino. I'm on the other side of the pit and there's this really pretty pit boss. And like, I have a hard time not looking at this, this woman. Like she's really pretty and she's having a hard time not looking at me. And I don't think it's because I'm attractive, because I'm not. <laughs> so I have a hand where uh, it's one of those days where I'm like losing every single hand. And the dealer um, has a 10 up and I have a blackjack. And the guy next to me is like, oh, there you go. Now you've won a hand. I'm like, hold on. It's not over yet. And I hear this voice behind me. It's this pit boss. I didn't even notice she had made her way behind me. She says, it's over for you, young man. And so, and it wasn't over because the dealer flipped over a blackjack. So I took a push. I was like, see, I freaking told you. So anyways, I decided to play dumb because I don't know. I was just feeling it that day. And I was like, I said to this pit boss that's backing me off. I'm like, listen, I know that you guys, you see me losing and you know, you guys are probably worried about me and you don't want to see me lose all my money, but it's okay. Like I have the money and it's fine. And, uh, I just like to gamble. So, and she was like, come on, man, you, you've been told at other properties in this chain that you can't play blackjack anymore. And I was like, all right, well, and I look over and the dealer has dealt me another hand. So I'm like, well, if we're going to do this, then you gotta, you gotta let me take a hit card because the dealer blew past me because I had 18 and flipped over a 20 of her own. And I was like, I never gave a hand signal. All right, and I want a hit card. So I hit my my hard 18 against the dealer's 20 and um, she let me do it. And um, they could kill the hand if they wanted to, but. Uh, so needless to say, I busted. That would have been absolutely glorious if I made 21, right? Or like 20 for a push and saved my money. Now that's an edge right there. I mean, even the fact that I busted, I had an edge because I was allowed to take a hit after knowing what the dealer had. So, you know, over the long run, that's going to be good for you if you know what the dealer has and you get to hit your hard 17, 18, or even 19, or even 20. You know what I mean? So, like, it's better than leaving it alone if the dealer has more than you and you know that and you still have a chance to hit. So, yeah. There was this other night where this pit boss, like, she would come up occasionally, but most of the time she was just ignoring my table because we were, like, at the end of the pit and, like, far away from where the, the pit was really hanging out. So they weren't really coming over here or paying any attention. They couldn't hear the dealer calling out checks play when I would start betting blacks. And um, so, yeah, it was actually a pretty good scenario. Assuming that surveillance wasn't watching, which apparently they weren't either, because I played for a few hours, which is insane for Las Vegas. It was perfect. And when she, every time she did come over, it seems like I was losing. So I said to her, I was like, you know, have you noticed that every time you come over here, I start losing? She's like, you know what? You're right about that. I'll try to stay over there, okay? I was like, yeah, yeah, get the hell out of here, right? <laughs> so I'm spreading my balls off over here. No problem at all. Yeah, it was absolutely hilarious because like I was like having fun with this pit boss and she was playing along she just had no idea and um some of them don't and uh it's hard to even know when you're really not paying attention so even if she was sharp enough to know that something's not right with my 1 to 40 spread then yeah <laughs> so yeah I just thought that was fantastic and um God, I hope she didn't get in trouble. Actually, you know what? I don't care. It's not my job. But, yeah. Look at all this traffic. This is brutal. But, yeah, I've noticed that the most 
viable strategy in Las Vegas is not to play until back off, but you can get more hours at places if you play until you get heat and then leave. They don't seem to... They don't seem to pursue it if you just leave. Like, they won't share with the next shift. Like, oh, look out for this guy. You just show up on the next shift, and it's like you have a, like, a brand new start. And then you play until you get heat, and then you leave again. They'll give you heat before they back you off. The back offs don't come from nowhere like they do at some places. It seems like you always are aware when it's about to happen, and you can get out of there. And uh, you get way more hours this way by doing a hit and run return type thing. But anyways, yeah, most of you are probably aware by now that my strategy, my MO, at most places, is just play until back off. You know, I don't, I don't see any reason to really do it any differently. Unless, again, you're in Las Vegas. Or maybe even Biloxi. Maybe I'll have to try that strategy in Biloxi. Just do a bunch of hit and runs. But last time I went to Biloxi and the time before that, I just play until back off. Then go to the next place, play until back off, and just keep doing that over and over again. And uh, I definitely didn't last nearly as long in Biloxi as I did in Las Vegas. So, um, yeah, I'll have to give that a try next time. I'm getting really good at hitting Biloxi. I've done it a couple times now, and I definitely know which places to hit first and which places to save until last and which places flyer. And, yeah, so... That's my secret, though. Well, that's going to do it for now. Um, hopefully I can get out of this traffic, like, before I die. But um, thanks for tuning in, and we will talk again soon.